Okay. Now there should be. Whoops, that was close. Right here. A fork in the road. Okay, um... Oh, there's a box. This area is actually too big. It is making me laggy. Uh, there are so many sheep rats here. I'm expecting a monster in the box. Sure enough. Ooh, that is so many! in for a bit of a hurt, I think. Oh, yes. Okay. Joshua, I need you to hit more than two sheep. What a... No. Okay. Well... That's not happening, I guess. Oh, uh, those were the two ones that were after! Okay. Kill... This... This... Sheep. Oh, Estelle, you were so close. Wait. Oh, Estelle's still alive! Somehow. Okay. Um. Somehow made it through there about a death. Joshua. Then, um, impede. No, not impede. Uh, hit three, right? Okay, right there. Mirage times five. Uh, 
What have we here? Customers? Come right in, have a look around the place. I recommend our spring boiled eggs. Well, if you recommend them. I'll take one. <laughs> that boy over there is wh what? <laughs> Did she just? Damn it! Okay. Uh, my husband is a chef in the hotel kitchen. His food is famous all with all the visitors here. He even got written about in some tourist book. Are you looking for a place to stay for the night? The Maple Leaf Inn is on the other side of town, just past the hot water tower. It's a nice place, you should stop by and have a look. But, uh, what's over here? Pump shed. It's locked. Which I guess makes sense. I wonder where this goes. But let's check out the... this place. I do not have enough mirror for that. But I want it. I want all of it! Give me your food! cover EP either. Hello and welcome to the Maple Leaf Inn. We have an, an authentic Eastern cuisine. We hope you have a wonderful time. Welcome everyone. This is the famous Maple Leaf Inn. We have lots of fine hot springs, including our famous Eastern style outdoor bath. Uh, it is not lost on me that she has a custom sprite. Because there's nothing like a hot bath after fishing. For that matter, there's nothing like a hot bath after just about anything. What a luxurious idea that is. They're... they're both cleaning? Are we gonna get a hot spring episode? <laughs> Is that something that's going to happen? I wonder. Hmm. That is true.
Okay, I think we have finished exploring. So, uh, we can go... Hmm. The Librarian. That's, that's what was next in the docket, I think. Well, actually, I guess we aren't done exploring because we haven't gone to that tower yet. But, um, I, like I said, I'm saving that until I have a third party member. Almost caught me there. Hmm. Nope, not there. Not there either. Let me think, though. Um... Okay, that's where that stuff is at. Uh, and I have... I don't have that much money. Okay. I believe that what's-his-name is on level floor, but the archive is on right here. Excuse me. We saw your request on the bulletin board. Oh my, you're here already. I only just put in a request a little while ago. Well, we just came in to change assignments, so we were ready for work. turned out to be much more of an ordeal than expected. I'll explain that in a moment. Before though, I have a matter I would like you to help settle. Consider it a favor. The archives loan out some books to various central factory departments. Sometimes they keep them past due date and don't pay fees. First, I'd like you to go get our books back. Third floor design room and fourth floor lab and clinic. Off we go. Design room, is that this one? Nope. I guess it was, I was too hopeful that the people who, It's right there. Septium Optic Annals. State of Orbital Technology Research. Um, during these 50 years since the Orbital Revolution, the Central Factory has striven in the reform of Orbital Technology in the... Okay, my brain is going all the style, and that is just... My eyes are rolling right over the words. one of my newest cooking recipes specifically for those readers of the book. Uh, Boyla Base? That's right, this delectable dish is of unobtrusive monster bits and one that everyone can enjoy. Follow my grand baking recipe and the monster corpse you've been dragging around will taste simply divine. Just whip out your sword and get started. Two juicy bones, two fish fillet, one crisp onion, one red pepper, and clear gelatin. Hmm. 
Ah, oh, we learned a recipe. Awesome. Let's see. Right there. Restore CP. Jellifying a famous dish. The feline language is distinct, has distinct characteristics depending on the region and may differ slightly from the following information. But this could be considered compatible to dialects of the human tongue. In addition, since the number of elongated vowel sounds are intimidate are intimately related to a cat's personality and emotional state, there is quite a broad range of variation. That being said, I've attempted to compile a list of the most common expressions. We had a kitty here to practice it on. That would be ideal, really. Okay, let's see. We have the books, so what is next on the docket? Oh, that's it? Good. Now... We have all the books again. I thank you for your assistance. That's good to hear. In that case, perhaps I should go ahead and ask you for help with my favorite type of work. Just like before, we need some overdue materials returned. The book in question is called The Herb Woodpecker. As a matter of fact, yes. Take a look at this. Approach the man of stone standing in silence within the mountain village pond, and ye shall receive. Oh, it's this guy! It's him! Mountain village pond. trick that researchers used to play on each other long ago. I have no idea what would possess someone to hide a book of all things. But we certainly have our fair share of unusual characters. It's not surprising that any of them might be follow such a bizarre custom. I'm pretty sure I know where that is. At least, but um... <laughs> Well, maybe I should have come here first. <laughs> oh, yeah, I already read that. Okay, um, no, I think... Is that the third floor or the fourth? It's on the third floor, right? Um, no, I was mistaken. Maybe it's on the fifth floor then. I remember running into Tita fairly quickly in here, so it was probably near the top. Ah, 
Haha! Currently, the orbital calculator is in poor condition. Oh no, that's not it. Shoot, where is this guy? Okay, just for record, okay. It does go through granule after all. Um. I went there. Okay. Hmm. But what I actually wanted to see was... Hmm. Where is this guy? Okay, well he's not on the fourth or fifth floor. Maybe I miss not in here. I already talked to you. Hmm. I haven't been in the office here. Maybe I can go in there now? Nope. Oh, okay. Welcome to the Central Factory. Can I help you? We are from the Bracer Guild. We'd like to meet with the factory head, if we may. Tell reached into her pocket, paused for dramatic effect, then flourished the introduction note to meet the factory chief. Joshua looked stoic and tried not to roll his eyes. Joshua failed. Sir, I'm terribly sorry to bother you during your... Yes, yes sir, the people from the Bracer Guild. Yes sir, right away. Thank you for waiting. Factory Chief Murdoch will see you now. Okay. Let's not. I've been waiting for you two, Stone Joshua, right? We're sorry to bother you at work like this. Excuse me. No, don't worry yourself about that. The Bracer Guild, and Cassius in particular, have done a great deal for me in the past. It would be rude of me to not welcome his children. I guess you might say that. He was my benefactor. It is no exaggeration to say that the Central Factory produces the finest ordnance in the land. Naturally, the confrontations over our craft have never really stopped. Whenever we had a problem, we'd always contact the Roland Branch and have him come over. Mm hmm And now, my benefactor's kids have come to visit me themselves. So what can I do for you? I'm happy to help. Kind of a long story. I see. Well then. Would you mind if I had a look at this ordinance? Hmm. Now this certainly is an oddity. It's obviously made from modern materials, but the caliber isn't inscribed anywhere. The number. Exactly. It's almost unheard of for an ornament to be produced about them. That's not just in liberal either. Most other nations on the continent are the same way. It's been a tradition dating back to when ornaments were first invented, 50 odd years ago.
<laughs> that seems completely in character for Estelle, Joshua. It's pretty much part of the production process, and that goes for any Orbital Factory. It's as if one... It's as if this... this eh. It's a prototype. If so, I'd imagine it wasn't made to entertain at birthday parties, if you take my meaning. Of course, I can't say for certain without looking inside. I can't find the maintenance cover. And now that I really look at it, it has no seams at all. How the hell was this thing made? Hmm. I don't see any way to check out the inside of it. Maybe it was... well, no, if it was well it shut, it would still have seams. Hmm. That might work, but I'd hate to just break something belonging to Cassius. Maybe we should let that professor handle it. Um, there was a note included with the orphanage. Professor R to do an analysis. Well, let me think. From the letter R and the people Cassius knew, it must be Professor Russell. I don't, but I know of him. He's known as the person who brought orbital technology to the Liberal in the first place. As I'm sure you know, ornaments were invented by Professor S. Epstein? And Professor Russell was one of his disciples. Forty years ago, he brought the ornaments and his knowledge back. And that's why the Liberal is this technology advanced nation. You might say that he was the father of the Orbital Revolution. Hmm. Even so, it worries me a little that you'll be letting the old prof, uh, handle this orbit. We have no idea what it really is. Well, how do I put this? For good or ill, he's a certified genius. When he gets an idea for a new invention in his head, there's no telling what he'll do. Much like the time when he was deploying the first orbital airship. <sighs> Sounds like it. I'm sure that he'll be able to figure this thing out. Go find him and ask him about it. It can't hurt. Good. Actually, I've been looking for you. Sorry to bother you, but can you come here? Alright, I'll be waiting. Oh, no, no. He actually has a private workshop in town. He has all the latest technology at his disposal, so I know he can figure out something about that thing. His granddaughter. She w Tita's his granddaughter! I'm sure the child will be happy to show you the way. What? You... Oh, Estelle and Joshua? You mean that you know each other? Well, we only just met a little while ago. So then, I guess she's the professor's granddaughter? Exactly. Tita, I've been talking with Estelle and Joshua here. I'd like for you to show them the way to your house. See, Grandpa. Okay, I will. I appreciate it. I guess, if you learn anything new, I'd love it if you came back and told me. As an engineer, I'm extremely curious to know more about this. Hmm. Turns out, this 
no wonder you're so comfortable with orphans. Oh, come on. I'm still just studying under my grandpa. Oh, by the way, do you races have business with him? Well, it's kind of complicated. Okay. Oh, wait. Actually, no. Hold on a second. For that, because... I, well, first of all... Oh, I see. Oh, we leveled up! Death Below 1... That's kind of a lame prize. Death Blow is just not very good. <laughs> okay, um, I want to go... Not there. No, I'm... Hmm. That's the pub, that's the Shara. That's the- No, I left the place already. It was in here. It was in here. I walked right past it. Slut, Tita. Okay. Everything is open. Interesting circuit combination. Um. Okay. So. Okay, this stuff hasn't changed. Wait. Battle suit. There. Ornament, though. Um, space ports only. Plus one range sounds good. Okay, that will give you not that much HP. Well, throw fire on Tita. But maybe I can get something good.
not a lot of stuff that I love here. Well, like, Haze is really good, but... Okay. We're gonna go for that for the spells. And then here we can put... Let's see... Wait, what do I lose if I take this off? Chaos Brand? Just Chaos Brand? Well, I don't care about Chaos Brand. Okay, then I can put Haze here, and then I have Chaos Brand back anyway. Um, or can I hit three on? Anyway, uh, that, and that might let me do something like that. Let's see if I have any other combos, though. I mean... Let's just do it like that. Um... Okay! Wait, no, I want to go back. Okay, still cannot afford that. I can afford this now, though. Not that. And that's the only... Okay, I just need the 800 ones. That's neat. So we're not going to worry about shopping right now. I could go explore that tower now, but I think I can wait on it a little bit longer. Let's see what... Let's see what Tita's grandpa has to say. Wow, nice place. <sighs> Through this door. Um, he's not here. Maybe he's upstairs? There he is. Grr. Okay, maybe this way. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, this is the professor? Nice to, uh, meet you. My name is Estelle Bright, of the Bracer Guild. We actually came to get your expert opinion on... Um... <laughs> I did it. It's finally complete. That's right. Who's the man? I'm the man. Yes, I just start testing it at once. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, Estelle. Grandpa kind of goes into a trance when he's working. He doesn't really n notice what's going on around him. I think he just finished up the devices he's been working on for the last few days. Hmm. Oh, he's something alright. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Oh, 
Grandpa! There are some people here who need to talk to you. Oh, Tita, you've come at just the right time. I need your help with compiling the data from these tests. Um, Grandpa, this new invention will actually block a biosensor or mint's detection faculties. It emits a unique orb of force field that deflects the energy of a biosensor sense when it scans. Oh no, she's starting to get caught in his... <laughs> Now, come on, we've got testing to do. Right! Yep, she has completely forgot about us. <laughs> hey, you with the black hair! Who else? On the upstairs bookcase is a note titled Orbital Energy as applied to force fields. Go get it. Go on! Be quick! <laughs> hey, young lady, with the antenna hair! Oh, no, you didn't. Quit farting around and make some coffee. Why should I have to make you coffee? I take a black, by the way. I want it clear as mud. What a demanding person. Um, where are Estelle and Joshua? She realized. <laughs> Come to think of it, I do vaguely recall a couple of young folks. Murdoch sent along some fresh faces then, I presume. <laughs> Grandpa. <laughs> So Estelle and Joshua inadvertently wound up as assistants in the experiment. After many small but mostly harmless explosions and some singeing of the eyebrows, the day gave way to evening. Sorry about all that. I just assumed you were both new employees at the factory. It's only natural that you wound up being drafted as assistants. Especially since the only thing you had me helping with was making coffee. Girls can bang metal parts together too, old man. How often does one get to participate in startup tests on a brand new type of ornament? Well now, you're a bright young lad then, aren't you? I want to give this bracer nonsense up and start up on the field of orbital engineering? Grandpa! I'm really sorry, guys. I guess I got caught up in the moment, too. But I thought the father of the revolution was going to be a really amazing man. Not some old fart with attention issues. Mm -hmm. From way back when. I have known him since his army day, some 20 years ago. I've met him too. He had the really nice mustache, right? Well... Let's just say yes. <laughs> but if he's known Dad for that long, it looks like we'll be safe in trusting you-know-what with Professor Ru Russell. Well... I see. Wow, a pitch black ornament. Most intriguing. And with no inscribed caliber or scenes. Look at that frame, too. <laughs> it's a special alloy steel cutter. Just as I thought. Here, take a look. Not even a scratch. The frame is made of some type of metal I've never encountered before. Opening it up for a closer look is going to be quite the task, I think. 
that's just crazy. If we can't find some way to open it, we're right back to square one. Well, I can certainly spend some time on trying. But first, I think maybe we should put it under a measurement scan. That huge piece of equipment you saw? It can gauge orbital energy activity in real time. It will allow us to see just what the orbit does. We won't be able to draw any definitive conclusions just from measuring what kind of activity is occurring, but it's a start. Indeed. So without further ado, Grandpa, shouldn't we have lunch first? We'll even help. No fair working when I'm not around. My house, my rules. <laughs> Ahem. Now if everyone is ready, let's get this started. Estelle, if you'll pull, put the ornament on the stand. Yes, thank you. Are you ready, Tita? All set. Good, good. Now, commencing orbital force measurement test on the black orbment. But using it officially is so boring and simple. Why not something cool like Dark Thingy of Impending Doom? Anything longer than Black Ormond would just be annoying to say. <laughs> Alright, let's begin. Tita, if you'll activate the scanner, please. Output at 45. Put all measuring equipment on standby. Roger. Done. Measuring equipment is calibrated. Okay, from here on out's the real deal. Since no direct input or output was detected, all we can do is measure how the central crystal circuit responds. Now let's see just how much the con contraption is really worth. And click! There, there. Tita? Any readings? Yes, but they're kind of weird. The tachometer? Now it's spinning around the dial. What? What's going on? I feel like we've done a bad. Don't you dare. Just a little longer and we'll have something. What in? We have no choice then. Terminate the experiment. Oh, they're back on. Whew. Let's see the readout. Nothing. It didn't record anything. And the only thing that kept working was the scanner on which the orbit sat. But even that, well, mm, as for everything else... I bet! 
was what I would dub the Orbal Shutdown Phenomenon. You, yeah. Hmm. I've no doubt. But I would never have dared to guess that its effect could be so extensive. Hmm. There's definitely more to this than I expected. Interesting. Most interesting indeed. Only you would think causing a blackout is interesting. Professor! <laughs> the feeling is not mutual. Every single time you invent something, it means trouble for me. What the hell were you up to that would cause power to go down for the whole damn city? How rude. It's not even my fault this time. See that there? That's the Black Ormond, and it caused this. Okay, I get it. If that's the root of this, then it's genuine, extenuating circumstances. But it still <laughs> means that it was your fault! This is so embarrassing. And so, the first day in Zeiss kept everyone busy. Due to how lit it was, Estelle and Joshua stayed at the lab for that night. It was. Hmm. No kidding indeed. Is he? Oh, he left for the central factory early this morning. He says something about how he's going to expose all of the Black Ormond secrets. We really appreciate both of you taking the time to look over something a couple of Grandpa Strangers projects. Oh, it's fine, really. Grandpa's investigating it out of pure curiosity more than anything. I should go to the factory myself once I'm done with breakfast. What do you plan to do? Naturally, we'll be coming with you. I want to know what's really going on with that Ormond too. Maybe there's something we can do to help. Yay, then you can come with me. Uh oh, I almost forgot about the soup! I guess that's what that smell is. But man, what a cutie. I wish we could take her back with us to Brooklyn. She could be like a pet, cheering us up whenever we're feeling down. <laughs> we're off. Uh, that might be wise. Okay, uh, is there anything back here? No. On that note, I think this is an excellent place for me to stop for the day. Um, I'll be back, like, you know, I have no idea. Sometime within the next week, I will be back. Until then, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day. Bye!